Hello and welcome to the video. This is my annual reminder of all the tips and tricks and best practice when you are going to be flying radio control stuff in the winter months. Now in the northern hemisphere we're kind of coming into that worse weather where it's a lot cold, it's a lot windier and it's a lot wetter as well. And that has an adverse effect not only on things like this. Uh, this is the Amatan Beaver. I'll put a link down below if you want to go and check that one out. It's one of my favourite quads at the moment. But also fixed wings, flying wings, whatever it is. It affects not only the models but also the pilot as well. And very specific things like the batteries and plastics even the air itself behaves differently at far colder temperatures. Now, I wasn't going to do another update this year because I've been doing it probably for four or five years at this point. However, I had a situation where I haven't been flying fixed wing for probably three months, and that's due to summer holidays, kids being on, uh, friends availability, the weather. And my first flying experience with fixed wing, even though I've been flying quads in that time, was a little bit interesting only because some of the best practice and the standard routine things that I do when I'm prepping before I go to the field when I get to the field it was all a little bit rusty it wasn't just there ready to use so if, imagine if three months will make you a little bit more hesitant about things that you need to remember imagine what six or seven months is going to do since the last time that you flew in really cold wet snowy or windy weather now a lot of this of course is going to be common sense but then Common sense isn't always as common, and again, as I've just explained, sometimes it's just because you haven't used it since last year, or if you came into the hobby in summer, you might not have experienced it at all. So let's run through a couple of slides just with some top tips and some good advice that if you're going to be flying in winter, things to think about. So before we get into the other slides, let's do some kind of headlines. So if you don't want to watch the rest of the video, you can kind of watch this one. You've got kind of 80% of everything I'm going to say. First and foremost is that battery performance will not be as good in the cold. The electrical energy is held inside the battery and released via a chemical reaction. Chemical reactions efficiency vary as a function of heat. So colder batteries will be more sluggish and that will result in lower flight times. Typically anything up to 20 even 30 percent depending on how you're flying and how you're pushing the pack. So if you're getting 10 minutes out of a battery in the summer, reset your timer for seven and a half, eight minutes to be safe when you're flying in winter. Same thing is you are affected as a pilot. Your fingers will be less nimble. So some of the things that you can get away with when the weather is nice and warm and everything's nice and nimble, particularly as you get a little bit older, then unfortunately that isn't the case in winter. And as your fingers, the blood pulled away by the cold, uh, they are going to get less sensitive and less precise. Moisture is going to get into everything. And I'm not just talking about the electronics that are hidden away inside a modern quadcopter. Any air scoops, vents, radios, goggles, you name it. The longer you're out in cold, wet, windy conditions, the more chance that moisture is going to get somewhere that you don't want it. A friend of mine used to store all of his cameras and v FPV equipment in the shed over the winter. And when we used to go and fly, he would regularly get the inside of the lenses fogging up as the camera started to get warm as it was working. So bring your cameras indoors, make sure you keep your goggles in a nice centrally heated place and that will help keep them safe too. The places that you fly are probably going to be slightly different than they are in the summer with nice soft long grass, open fields. It's probably going to be more like there's patches of mud, patches of ice, definitely patches of water, potentially even patches of snow. And if you're a golfer, you'll appreciate this. A lot of the golf balls I seem to buy are wood-seeking golf balls. So they'll go into the trees and I'll never see them again. Uh, radio control equipment is kind of the same in that it is moisture-seeking. So when it lands or crashes, it won't crash in the 90% of the field that you're flying in that's dry. It'll crash into that snow or into the puddle. So be prepared with something to dry stuff off and if it is completely covered in mud and the motors are too i wouldn't recommend you fly that model until you've had a chance to clean out all of that grit some of which might be ferrous from the motor windings to make sure that everything is going to fly fine and you're not going to shorten the life of the motor don't forget that windier conditions can make things like return to home not work very well. If your model uses a return to home function that also includes some kind of compass that you have to calibrate before you fly, 
you're probably going to get away with it. If, however, you're using something like the beta flight rescue mode or something like iNav in a plane where it doesn't have a compass, which is the way I set mine up, flying in higher winds will cause significant deviation uh, from the heading reading that it actually gets because it's being pushed through the air as well into trying to fly and that will ultimately mean that those modes don't work as well so be aware of that and don't rely on them particularly if it's gusty or windy weather unless you have that compass installed and configured and calibrated great Lower lights and more challenging conditions in winter can affect the way the FPV and also line of sight flying works as well. Things like wide dynamic ranges on your FPV cameras are really handy. The sun is going to be lower in the sky when it does appear and that can very quickly blow out the ground. So the ground just becomes a black streak in your field of view while the sky is successfully exposed. Similarly, when it's a very gray overcast day where no direct light then things like white foamy's line of sight can disappear very quickly as everything just takes on the same gray appearance in the sky and that's why i would recommend if you're going to be flying in the winter particularly on things like wings and smaller quads i would fit leds and definitely things like buzzers to help you find them when they come down the grass is typically going to be longer it won't be being as cut as often as it is in summer or if you're flying on something like a farm it's just going to be you know a boggy field uh, when it lands and if your spotter can't tell you exactly where it came down being able to activate a buzzer or use bright leds to find it in all of that brush is going to mean that you take that model home rather than lose it forever so with those headlines covered let's get into a little bit more nitty-gritty First and foremost is that I would recommend that you do check the forecast. I know this is really obvious, but you know what? It's amazing how in the morning it might be beautiful up till 11 o'clock and then the wind starts coming in and then the grey clouds appear and then you start to get rain. There's no point going to the field and doing all that stuff if you want to be there for five or six hours, if you're only going to get 30 minutes of flying time. It also means that you can take all the appropriate kit and the appropriate models that are going to handle those more challenging conditions better. My top tip is keep a clean dry towel in with the kit that you take to the field in winter it means that you can wipe off lenses you can clean stuff down before you back in the car uh, you can even get rid of some of the mud that's all over your jeans when you get back to the car as well before you come back to the field it's amazing how often that poor little towel comes back absolutely sodden full of bits of mud and has to go through the washing machine but it's great that that's there because it means then that mud isn't transferred to everything else and potentially dry and get into places on the model that i don't want it to get to Another top tip is keep the FPV cameras and things like your goggles and your radio. If you drive to the field, keep them in the car and keep them in the warm car until you need them. Taking them out and sticking them on the flight line in really cold weather is just going to let them cool down. And when you put the goggles on, if you're flying FPV, then even with the misting fans on, the moisture from your eyes and your face on that cold lens is just going to make it fog up immediately. So try and keep all the equipment warm. When you're not using it, put it somewhere that it isn't going to get very cold. If you're going to be flying something like this and there's a chance that water and stuff is going to splash up inside the electronics, configure getting a can of conformal coating. I've got mine behind me. I just give everything a nice, generous coat and that can help with uh, things like water and stuff getting into places not causing a problem. And if you do land in that muddy puddle, which is inevitably what ends up happening, my advice would be in those situations, don't try and just wipe all the mud off and try and fly. A lot of, particularly around here where I live, a lot of the stuff in the field is ferrous, i.e used to be steel and iron and it's now rust um, and those will get drawn into the bearings if you spin the motor what i would do is at that point if it's gone and you've got crusty motors because it always seems to go in one arm first i would kind of put that model to one side and kind of call it quits for the day take it home dry it out in the central heating of your house once it's dry use a soft brush to get as much of it off as possible and then make sure that you lubricate everything to make sure it's nice and clean Trying to clean stuff like this at the field when things are encased in mud usually just drives the mud into places that you don't want it to be. The other obvious thing that's going to happen, of course, is going to be an awful lot colder, and that is going to affect you as well as the model. 
So wrap up warm, make sure that you have things like hand warmers with you. They're incredibly handy in between flights, keep them in your pockets. Uh, I used to use used lipos and kind of hold those in my hands, in my pockets to keep the blood flow to my fingertips. But do wrap up warm because if you're cold, uh, you won't be as sharp as you were when you were flying in the summer with the sun on your back. As I mentioned in the beginning, Batteries will perform less well in the colder conditions, so allow about 20% less flight time out of your batteries. And I wouldn't push them as hard because that chemical reaction to release the electrical energy isn't going to work as well until that battery gets nice and warm. Things like foam, and plastics will be more brittle in the winter too. Those of you that may have a hose for watering the garden, if you've ever unraveled it on a warm sunny day versus unraveling it in the middle of winter, you'll know that in the middle of winter, the hose is actually very stiff. And that's kind of the same with the foam and the plastics. Things that would have resulted in just the model bouncing in the summer will probably result in cracks, fractures and breaks when you try and do that in winter so be more rigorous after an unintended landing or crash as they're sometimes known to double check everything on the model make sure there's nothing separated and check it over two or three times more carefully than you would do in the summertime months last thing i mention is if you do get a chance to fly over some snow covered landscapes it is a magical, fantastic experience. I love it. It doesn't snow as much here as I would like in the winter. Um, so, you know, we never have white Christmases here where I live. However, for those days where it does snow, going out and flying a quad or a wing and having some FPV experiences over that beautiful, crisp, white countryside is a little bit magic. So don't be put off by this stuff. If you get a chance to go out and fly over it, I definitely would. Couple more thoughts on how to handle the lower light conditions. Um, although our eyes as a human will adjust so it kind of feels pretty bright, you might find that your FPV cameras don't handle it as well. There are lots of better cameras that wide dynamic range, so it'll expose the sky with a low, big, watery sun in it, as well as the ground is very handy when you're flying FPV too. I would also recommend wearing a nice, bright, top so that you can easily see that so even if you do have a situation where the lens on the camera or the lens on the goggles does steam up because they're getting cold then you have a chance while you're flying around of kind of spotting i have a bright orange fleece that i tend to wear in the winter and that helps spot it against kind of the gray uh, murky ground that i'm standing on Tips for line of sight, I would definitely say install some LEDs, things like regular WS2812 LEDs or standard LEDs you can buy off eBay are fine. Uh, things like the Menace RC Cobb LEDs are incredibly bright and a couple of those on a model will help with orientation and also with finding the thing when you land. Put some bright decals on there. I tend to only put decals on one side of the model, usually the top, and then I know if I can see decals i tend to use orange again for winter flying if i can see the decals i know i'm looking at the top of that particular model last slide is about the higher levels of wind and particularly gusty wind you will find that if you've been flying in summer in nicer calmer conditions you might not have experienced that at the ground level it might be only eight nine ten miles an hour and you'll be looking at the tops of the trees and going yeah, we'll get away with it and trying to fly. As you gain altitude, you can get into higher and higher winds. Also, some of those can be quite gusty, which makes uh, flying without a stabilizer or support um, quite challenging sometimes. Again, as I mentioned in the beginning, things like return to home in models that do not use a compass for heading will not work as well. i put a link down below to the video that explains in detail why that is. So if you're not using iNav with a compass on whatever model you're using or Ardu Pilot, then just be aware of that. Don't think that you can flick that return to home switch and it's going to work in the same way as summer. Probably isn't. So I tend to try and not use return to home as a mode, um, it's there more as a fail safe for when I really need it. Also remember that when you're flying in wind, flying with the wind, you're going to pick up a lot of speed as the wind is at the back of the model. But then when you turn around and fly back into the wind, you're going to need a lot more power to make progress. So if you're doing a longer flight to maybe the edge of line of sight, you're flying with the wind, you'll think, oh, okay, I'll, I can keep flying in this direction till I'm half the battery and then turn around. 
you can't. You probably can fly till about a third of the battery, then turn around because you're going to have to fight all the way back to get to the landing site. So be aware of that and take that into consideration when you're thinking about where you want to fly and what direction the wind is around you and how that's going to affect the model. And the last big thing from this is the fact that the wind can change at different levels. It can even change direction sometimes as well at different heights. Typically below the kind of 400 foot legal height that we have here in the UK, it's relatively uniform. You tend to find it just gets gustier as you get towards that maximum height. So if you are struggling to get back or struggling to control the model, losing height can often get you into calmer air where the air has been broken up a little bit by things like trees and stuff and isn't quite as gusty. However, be careful because the wind coming off the top of buildings and trees is going to be very turbulent and if you fly into that air, it could flip you over. So be well away from things like trees and buildings and stuff that are going to affect the laminar flow of the wind, well, as laminar as it gets, and can of cause you a problem. So there we have it, just some general reminders about flying in winter. Hopefully none of this is new to you. Again, it's all common sense. However, just a gentle reminder, that keep this stuff in mind if you're going to fly in winter and you'll have a far more successful fun time. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.